Hey all, welcome to this week's episode of Whiskey Warehouse. I'm Dylan, you guys know me, but who you might not know is Mr. Bright over here, Mr. Ryan Bright, uh, entrepreneur, uh, former, well, and business owner, I guess. Yeah, that's yeah. right. Yeah, uh, currently working on a, a big business uh, for a nursery industry, but uh, met Dylan through the military, I'm a Navy CB, and uh, He's introduced me to uh, the life of bourbon and whiskey. I'm not a big fan of it, so see if you can convince me. Yep. So Ryan is not a uh, bourbon guy. He's more of a tequila, vodka, uh, and sake. I would yeah. say, yeah, sake. Sake, yes. Yeah, uh, so he is in no means a whiskey expert. Uh, he is just open to trying today's spirit. He generously donated this bottle to us, which is awesome. We appreciate it, man. And yeah, no problem, man. Love the fact that you kind of bought into our channel, so. Uh, well, I think you guys are doing good work and uh, you guys are gonna just grow from this point on and just uh, trying to help a feather on entrepreneur out, so. Heck yeah. So we'll get into the history of this bottle. Uh, Calumet Farms, they are, uh, they started out as a baking powder company and then uh, that was, a, they opened in 1924. Uh, transitioned over to horse racing, they have two Triple Crown winners and eight Kentucky Derby winners. Uh, and then they base their, their bourbon off from their winning style. So you see up here, uh, I'll show you guys later, it, or you can see it in the picture. Uh, there's a horse up here on the, uh, what would you call that, the handle, I guess? The neck. Yeah, the neck. The, the neck, neck of the bottle. Good thinking. Um, yeah, unopened. We're gonna, I haven't had it. He's never had it. I've never heard of it. So we're gonna dive into this. Normally running retail at $80 a bottle. Uh, we found it here. Actually a lot cheaper. I won't give you guys the price, but we found it a lot cheaper. Um, it's special circumstances on that. Um, Dylan recommended trying a 10-year bottle to start off with for uh, my first time doing bourbon. So a lot more complexity he was explaining to me mm -hmm. and, and better smells and flavors. So we'll see what happens. The look on the bottle is actually uh, similar to 1792. Yeah, 1792, and uh, it's very pretty. Nice wood top on here, pork in the in the inside, and a plastic seal around the outside. So I guess we can kind of get into. Well, we can open the bottle. We'll talk about the three other types of bourbon that they make, and then we'll explain why this one is so complex and why it's special to them. So uh, me. without further ado. Wait, we couldn't redo this if we needed to. Nope. <laughs> All right, we'll get rid of that here. Put that over there. Uh, okay, so this is one of the three bourbons that they have. Uh, they have a small batch, they have the 10-year, and then they have the 12-year. The 12-year is running, uh, at, I think MSRP is, uh, I think it's a hundred and something bucks a bottle, which is that's pretty Price. high. Yes. And then, uh, so the 10 and the 12 year are special because they pull each one from the same uh, rack. It's called a single rack black 10 year. Uh, 19 barrels are pulled from that one rack. It's a center cut. And uh, am I missing anything we were doing over the... No, I mean, uh, you were explaining that they do a smaller barrel too. Now traditionally same size barrel. So that was, uh, that was one of their highlights is that they did a smaller barrel than the mm -hmm. traditional barrel size. Yep. So. They were, they were explaining that it did more uh, more for them in the complexity of the flavors. Mm -hmm. This is a very cool bottle. I like the, the font on the front. The Calumet Farms is very, very cool. It's actually right here uh, is the picture of the barn. So that's pretty cool. Uh, let's go ahead and dive into opening it. We should get the, the nice pop on this because we got a cork. Yeah. And there it yep. was. Beautiful. It smells good just on the opening. It smells very good. Almost, yeah. I would say that that bubble gum assessment that I was talking to you about is fairly true on that. That's almost bubble gummy. So that's um, pretty good, and I don't like smelling any type of liquor. So um, I like that. Mm. Uh, I love when we get a wood top with the cork. I love it. It's, it shows that they're they care about the image of their product. Some some people with twist off tops, you know, it's a bottom shelfer with the with the higher quality stuff. You're gonna get corks, which it's fantastic. Uh, we'll go ahead and pour it up. 
I'm drinking from a Glencairn, and you are going to be drinking from a regular, was it a low ball glass, right? Yep, low ball. So, the reason we drink from Glencairns is because uh, it traps the ethanol in the in the glass, basically, and uh, it helps you to be able to smell it because it's rotating with the air, it's keeping everything in there. Uh, it helps you be able to smell more complexities in the bourbon, so you might get, like, with your glass, you might only get vanilla and char. With mine, I might end up smelling like peanut or something like that. In there. Okay. So it's actually, it's beneficial to use, uh, but it's not, you don't need to be using a Glencairn. You can use whatever glass you want. So you're saying basically it creates an air pocket mm -hmm. with the way the design of yep. the glass, yep. and it just circulates inside there because of it. Yep. Oh, and I'll show you guys some cool tips and tricks with, with this glass uh, to know if you're using it properly. So I'll cool. show you that as well. Uh, right. I know we didn't talk about it, but we'll, we'll cover it now. I'm excited. Uh, let's go ahead and kind of dump her in there to look at the color, look at the legs, and then we'll... Hey, you're the master man. Fall in the suit. There we go. That's a nice little pour there. Yeah, it is. <laughs> See, you would think that it looks like a lot. It's not. So what you want to do with Glencairns... I don't know if I did it right this time, but normally I do. I'm very good at this. Is if you tilt it on its side and it doesn't run out, you have a perfect pour. You want it to be just at the tip of that. See how it's like, you guys can't see this, but you want it to be right there. That's one that's, point. That's right on that's the edge. That's 1.75 ounces. So this is a perfect pour here. And this is what exactly what I gave you. It looks like a lot. It's not. Uh, yeah, that's not going to work in this glass. No, no, not at all. <laughs> run out. Uh, so what we're going to talk about is the color. Yep, you're starting to see the legs. This one, this is normally why you give it the swirl. So you'll give it a little, and you'll start to see legs form. So the legs are a form of telling the viscosity, how much water has been added to the product, how thick it is. So see how they're taking a little bit, but they are starting to form. Yeah. Right up there on oh, the top. Yeah. yeah. This one, it would appear, is very thick. We got a nice strong one coming down right here. It looks because we had the, uh, the arc. Mm -hmm. Yeah, this one is, I would say probably not very viscous. So this should be a thicker, a thicker bourbon, which should be good. Almost like a rundown yep. honey. And what we talk about with this is chewiness. So when you drink it, you want to kind of like you're rinsing your mouth. Okay. It creates a, a makes your mouth numb. Basically, okay. and you're able to taste the flavor, so you're not getting as much burn. Uh, hmm. Yeah, and the color looks great on this too. Yes. I mean, it's it's real, real dark. Yep. Nice golden, almost coppery look. Yeah, it's really dark. Very beautiful. We we noticed when we were looking at the bottle earlier that we are seeing little like specks of stuff floating in here. I would imagine that that would be the char from the barrel. So and it's, it's very like floating. It's not yeah, moving. It does much. not move at all. Uh, <laughs> so yeah. We've gotten into the color, we've covered the legs. The more, like the thinner the bourbon is, the easier the legs are gonna come down. So that's something we need to kind of discuss. The water being added to it, it's making it thinner, it makes it less chewy. Uh, some, some bourbons will be described as oily, which comes, this should be oily. We want this to be oily. Okay, so now the, what, that enhances the flavor mm -hmm. because yep. it's, it's You're lingering more. Your, if they came out with a barrel proof, this would be more true to the barrel proof because it's less water is being added. Gotcha. So maybe you'll have more of like a close taste to that. Maybe that's the reason why they're using the smaller barrels and mm -hmm. they're probably achieving the same effect. Mm -hmm. And I don't know if you can smell it, but you can kind of, it's like yeah, it's constant the breeze. Yeah, it's definitely it smells coming very up the breeze. Good. Yeah. Uh, okay. So we've covered the color in the legs. Right. I'm giving you guys, we're, this is an educational episode as well. because I'm new to this. Yep. Yeah. So we're, we're covering all of our bases. If you want to know anything about bourbon or tasting it, this is probably going to be the episode to watch. Uh, yeah, totally new to this. No, no experience. So we'll go into the nosing. I want you to go ahead and pick up your glass. Okay. I want you to sniff it and tell me. Make sure you open your mouth a little bit. Put your nose like kind of down into the glass. Keep your mouth open and just let it. You should be able to to smell something. Doesn't smell. I think I got used to the smell. <laughs> yeah, this, this is something that... Yeah, I, got, some people, I totally got used to the smell. Some people will have like some coffee grinds or something like that to help. Uh, it, came, it came off at first like you got that ethanol burn, right? Mm -hmm. That's what it came off at first. So I was like, okay, I want to push back it. 
uh, and try to get some more flavors. But um, I I'm also don't have a good sniffer, so I'll just to let you guys know, I suffer from uh, chronic sinus infections all the time. So my smell's not the greatest. But from what, let's see if I can get another shot of this. Oh, okay, so definitely char. Mm -hmm. I can smell that charringness. Mm -hmm. That's pretty much all I can get though. Okay. Now go ahead and take my glass, give it a little sniff. So the, the Glencairn is going to help enhance the smell. Oh yeah. Oh, oh, um. There's definitely a little bit of vanilla there. Mm -hmm. I can smell that. I couldn't smell that in this. Mm -hmm. I can smell the char, but it's not nearly as potent. Mm -hmm. It helps to have a good nose when you're, when you're doing this, but it definitely helps with the Glencairn as well because you're all that ethanol vapor and stuff like that is interacting with the air. It's getting in there, and you're able to smell it just a lot more. And it's it also helps with, uh, with a little bit with flavor, just because when you put it up there, it's between your nose and your mouth, you're able to get just a little bit more flavor out of it, and you'll be able to taste it a little bit better. Unfortunately, we don't have another one for you to drink out of. So. Right. No, no, and that's completely fine. But as a, from the biggest detail that I can tell, because I can't really smell much for flavor or anything like that, I can definitely smell the char and the ethanol in this. When I smelled that, it was smooth. It was a smooth smell. And that's the, I don't, I don't even understand how that worked out. Because this one, you kind of get that smell when you smell a bottle, it just like burns a little bit, right? You know, this one, I didn't get any of that effect at all. And I don't even know how that's possible. Mm -hmm. So that's weird on that, just the mechanics of that. I get like maple, uh, vanilla, and then uh, caramel. This almost smells, if, for those of you that are familiar, this smells like Weller. Uh, Weller is like a very smooth, easygoing, weeded bourbon. So okay. weeded bourbons are very smooth, very tasty. Your ryes are where you start getting into like spicy. Okay. So if, if you say, if you hear someone say this is a high rye mash bill, it's probably gonna be a little hot. It's gonna taste almost like a crushed red pepper okay. or a, like a like a black pepper type flavor. And so it's it's a there's a big difference. This smells delicious. It does have like a nice. You do smell bubble gum on it. It's just so weird. Man. Try this. Try smelling out of this one. It is a lot more dull, but you can definitely get, like like you said, char, and then uh, you get that ethanol burn, though. I don't, just because oh. I'm used to having used that. To it, I, I, man, I was blown away by that. Just to... Yeah, it's a lot harder to smell out of this. This is very clear. Yeah, that was very clear, very smooth smell. Even though I can't really distinguish the flavors of everything, it was easy to breathe. Yeah, this is good. I expect this, based off of the nose, to be very good. So we'll go ahead and get into the tasting of this. Okay, so now the goal for this is to take a little bit and swish it in the mm -hmm. first batch? Yep. Okay. And then just try to pick apart whatever flavor. Most of the time you're going to get your more flavors from the second tasting. Okay. See so what happens. Cheers, man. Cheers. Mmm. Initial on the, on the taste was honey. But it's opening up to more oak and char for me. This is actually very good. That is staying in my mouth a long time. Mm -hmm. So you're getting, <laughs> your finish is, is long. That is super long. What's, how's the burn for you? For me, the burn is very like... Uh, it's tolerable. It's nice. It's, it's, it's oh, there it goes. It's starting to hit the lower part of the mm -hmm. esophagus. Mm -hmm. um, ooh, okay. Right, interesting. But how does your mouth feel right now? Is it like, it's a little numb, right? It's a little numb. Yep. Yeah, it's it's where you want to be. So this second taste... It's going to give you a lot more flavor. But right off the bat on the palate, it was straight honey for me. It was, uh, I couldn't get the flavors out of it, but I can definitely tell you the description of, of how it felt. It felt smooth. It felt mm -hmm. really good. Mm -hmm. It didn't burn at first at all. Nothing. Mm -hmm. And then um, swished it around. And that's when the I could start to taste a little bit more, but I couldn't really pick it apart. So mm -hmm. hopefully this next tasting will do yep. the job. Yep. And then uh, when I swallowed it, it was, ooh, that's a little rough. It levels out. It leveled out really, really smooth. I mean, I, I drank this. I, I, I feel comfortable drinking this, like, yep. just like this. Yep. Like, I could buy another bottle of this. And that's, this. that's where you want to be at, is with, with the sweet spot of bourbon. Like I said, 10 years is like 8 to 12 is where you want to be at. Anything more, 
you're paying for the H. Anything less, you're not going to get as much complexity. This is actually very good and very complex. It, uh, it definitely stayed in my mouth a yes. long time. <laughs> I would say, honestly, this matches up with Blanton's, which I know you haven't had yet. You will eventually. You're going to see it on the shelf, and you're like, let me get some of that. Okay. Very good. Very good. Matches up with that perfectly. So is there like a timeline you want to have before you take your next sip, or, or you want to necessarily you want to wait until that finish is gone and then go ahead. But you also want your mouth to still be a little numb. You, you want should to be a little still, numb. Okay, yep. right now is the time then. Yep. Cheers. Okay. Cheers. Mm. Vanilla. Vanilla. A little corn. No pepper. I don't get any pepper with this at all. It's caramely. I can taste the caramely, mm -hmm. the vanilla. I would say almost butterscotchy. Butterscotchy. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's exactly. Very good. This is a this is very good, and for the price that we paid, I would say well that you paid. Uh, this is very good, and I am every bit not surprised that it is at that eighty dollar price range on on the uh, stores. So this is very good. Yeah. No. Uh, flavor wise, it's. Um, like, I mean, to, it's straight up, guys. I mean, I don't drink whiskey. I avoid it like a plague. Um, it's always made me sick. And this is not showing any signs of that whatsoever. I think this gentleman might have convinced me to actually start trying more uh, bourbons and whiskeys because of this. Mm -hmm. So the, we're the, going to have Ryan on here a couple times because we've got, he bought three different whiskeys to try. We've got this. We've got uh, Long Branch, which is very good. I, I really think you're going to like Long Branch more than this just because this is very, like, uh, it's high proof. Not high, but it's yeah. a higher proof for you. Uh, and then Long Branch is a lot smoother. It's a little bit more watered down. This is very, very good. Ten year, all the way, this is great. Maybe you would like, you would like Eagle Rare, which is another ten, ten year bourbon, uh, but a lot sweeter than this. This is like the even, perfect amount of sweetness. Even the yeah, I mean, even with the not being super sweet at all, it's still good. I mean, oh, and even on the nose, if you if you really get past it, man, you smell butterscotch in this. Like, the flavor is there. You get butterscotch on the nose as well. I didn't it's get the butterscotch good. until after I swallowed a little bit, mm -hmm. and then it started to yep. finish off. And then at the end, that's when the butterscotch started hitting the back of my tongue mm -hmm. really hard. Yep, and so that's part of the finish as well. But when I was getting it was when I was tasting it. It was just boom. Really? I got it. Cool. This is very good. Very, very good. And I, I would highly recommend this. This one's going to go as a, if you see it, buy it. Very good. Wow. It, and I'll say, too, on, on, the, on the palate, you get a lot of, you get like a, I wouldn't say a lot, but you get a very healthy dose of maple. I think is what I was getting as well. It's very good. Yeah, it's, it's it's hard for me to pick it apart just because I haven't experienced anything like this before. Mm. But the butterscotch, I can definitely definitely pick out the butterscotch. Mm. So, dude, I I'm not gonna lie, this is I love this. But thank you for oh hey, you're welcome. Up, you know, thanks for having me on the show and and doing this and teaching me on on how, how all this works out. So, I mean, I, I at least you found one that worked. Yeah, this is very good. I'm, like, blown away with this. Because I was, not going to lie, expecting this to be very harsh. Very good. Very good. Uh, Ryan, I've got a couple questions for you. Shoot. You're going to rate this. Okay. I know you've had, you said Hibiki. Yeah, I've had Hibiki uh, whiskey, Japanese whiskey. And then you said you had a... What was the price on the shot? Sixty dollars. Yeah, it was a sixty dollars shot of whiskey for a buddy, just because that's his favorite drinks. So between the Hibiki and that, where would you rank this on a scale? Uh, of zero or of one to one hundred. One being like the worst you've ever had. One hundred being like one of the absolute best. Oh, this is definitely this is definitely one of the top mm -hmm. things I've tried whiskey wise. Um, the Hibiki was okay. It was a lot of burn mm -hmm. on it, and I didn't particularly care for. It. I had to water it down. Just because it was it was just too much. Um, the shot I had my buddy that was a sixty dollar shot. I wish I remember the name of it, but it went down really smooth. Uh, but it didn't last like this. Mm -hmm. It didn't last in my mouth like this at all. Okay. I mean, the, the other one just kind of puttered off within mm -hmm. 15, 20 seconds, and this one's still in my mouth. It's still lingering in there. Mm -hmm. Yep, nice the flavor, flavor. Yeah, yeah, it's just great. Um, I would put this definitely probably the best one I've ever had. Okay. 
So you're going to give this 100 right now. As, 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 the, right now. as of right yeah. now, I'm going to give this uh, the best whiskey mm -hmm. bourbon I've ever had. Okay. I'm, I'm going to go with you. This is one of the best I've had. Uh, this is going to get a 93 for me. Okay. If I had to rank it, it's a 93. Absolutely beautiful flavor. All right, so 93 for me. Absolutely one of the best whiskeys I've ever had. This is fantastic. Uh, let's get into this, uh, one question really quick. Sure. Do you recommend this to a new bourbon whiskey drinker? Oh, I highly recommend this to a new person. Um, it's If they ever drink Jack Daniels or Jen Bean or anything along those lines, and they went to this, they're going to think night and day of how much better this is mm -hmm. and how well it is to drink. So, I would highly, oh, this beats out both of those companies by miles. Uh, next question is, what time of year or when would you drink this? Uh, definitely feel like winter would be the best time. I picture myself really, you know, just chilling in a, a house with a fireplace and a chair, reading a book and just mm -hmm. sipping on it. Or even fall time, I mean, we could look at it. Uh, I like harvesting stuff and mm -hmm. carving pumpkins, so next Halloween, it definitely looks like uh, yeah. it could be a moment of drinking some uh, some bourbon and carving a pumpkin. Yeah, this was very, very good. Nice surprise. Uh, I need another question. I think that was it, though. Uh, well, you want to do shout outs? Yeah, 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 we can do our shout outs. Uh, go ahead, man. Oh, shout okay. Your, your people. Uh, so, uh, shout out to the CB community and my family there. Uh, it's great people, great small batch of uh, Navy sailors. Uh, we're all land sailors, so we don't really go on ships at all. Yeah. And uh, shout out to the corpsmen out there. Help us survive. Uh, great, great group of people. Um, change your socks, take some Motrin. Hey man, that's the cure all. Come back tomorrow. Yeah, Motrin and change your socks. Uh, and then, uh, shout out to just uh, the good whiskey community that was willing to uh, instruct me and teach me a little bit more on how this works out. I mean, very educational. Episode. Very educational, yeah. Uh, shout out to you. Thanks, man. And uh, to the whiskey warehouse. So, yeah. Uh, Shout out to you. Appreciate it. Shout out to my wife, Cassandra, and my kids. She's pretty cool. Uh, Dave, shout out to you, Nick, and Trent. Good job, guys. While I'm gone, I appreciate you holding it down. Can't wait to get back and we can start reviewing together. I think we're going to just explode once that happens. Which, uh, one, which one's Beardy again? Beardy is Trent. Trent, okay. Yeah. So I think we're going to explode once all three of us are in the same room. It's going to be fantastic. Yeah, I look forward to you guys' video. I, I highly recommend for everybody to subscribe to you guys. So. Um, and then, do I have anything else? Oh, yeah, Eagle Rare giveaway. Uh, we're going to be doing that. Just subscribe, 100 subscribers. We're going to be taking care of it. And then, uh, yeah, just follow us on Instagram, YouTube, whatever. Uh, and then, oh, make sure you comment on, on YouTube because I won't know who you are unless you comment. So, help me out, help us out. And uh, make sure you you at least comment because I need to know who you are so I can add you in, or else we're just gonna have forty people. And uh, I'm adding my good. I'm adding my comments, so that way I can get a chance to that bottle. Yeah, that's good stuff. Yeah. Ten years, same stuff as this. Very, uh, very, very sweet. You would like that a lot. Yeah. Uh, I guess that's really it, right? Cool. We're, we're done for the day. Make sure you guys are at least like almost 21 for this because we want you guys to watch this and know what to drink once you are of age don't drink underage and then uh look forward to another video that i'll be joining him in and uh, one of the bottles i got was the uh bottle based out of nevada yep better known company yeah we'll get you guys out of here soon till then